When things aren't going the way that you want, how do you respond to that situation? If it's a medical thing, I mean, a lot of times we talk about finding a different doctor. And I'm not opposed to doctors, but I think the first thing that we need to do is we need to go to God. We need to go to Jesus Christ and we need to say, Lord, have mercy on me. <clears throat> and we need to listen for his guidance. We need to listen for his direction. Doctors are going to tell us that they're limited in their knowledge. Some of them may be. They don't think they're limited in their knowledge. But I think most of them recognize that they're limited in their knowledge. But we, we know the God who put us together. We know the engineer. We know the designer. We know the one who's taking care of us. And so if we need help, the first place we need to go is to him. And that's not just medical issues. That's other type of issues. I mean, whatever it is that we're going through in our life, God knows. And so the first place we need to do is we need to go to him and long for that mercy that this woman was, was longing for. The second act, example is that she acts in worship. <clears throat> she's acting in worship. So, I mean, she's following Jesus around, and she says, Jesus, have mercy on me, and Jesus ignores her. And the disciples say, would you do something about this woman? And Jesus' response in verse 24 is, I wasn't sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. In other words, I'm not going to do anything for you. If you get that kind of response, what are you going to do? You want to kick Jesus in the shins? Maybe? <laughs> this woman worships Jesus. Doesn't that seem like a bit of a contradiction? She worships Jesus. Uh, she continues to worship him. And I think that, that, you know, as we look at this passage again, as she comes to him, she recognizes him. Oh Lord, this is verse 22, oh Lord, son of David. Amen. She is recognizing that Jesus is the son of God. And so despite the fact that Jesus has said, I'm not going to do anything about this situation, she continues to recognize that this is Jesus, the son of God. And so there's nothing the matter with her worshiping him, even though he said he's not going to do anything. <clears throat> she continues in. And you know, when we look at this word worship, we can, we can go all kinds of different ways. Sometimes we say that they worship, um, they worship uh, someone just by bowing down before them. I mean, a leader or something like that. Um, Daniel was called upon, Daniel from the Bible, not this Daniel. Daniel was called upon to bow before this huge idol that King Nebuchadnezzar had made. He was supposed to worship that, but he refused to do it. When Jesus was being tempted in the wilderness, you remember what Satan wanted him to do? Bow down and worship me, and all the kingdoms of the world will be yours. He wanted Jesus to bow down and to worship. This woman bows down to Jesus because she recognizes that he is the Messiah. And you know, when we look at what she's doing here, I think for some of us, we might even say this doesn't really look like worship. I mean, for some of us, worship is coming into a building. We sit down in our pew. We listen to Wade sing some songs, and if we're feeling in the mood, we sing along with him. Pastor gets up and talks for about 25 minutes, throw in a couple of prayers, that's worship. Is it? This woman worshipped Jesus. She wasn't in a church. There wasn't anybody playing piano. There wasn't even any air conditioning. <laughs> but she worships Jesus. You know, sometimes I think we get caught up with the old idea of worship and what does it look like? What does worship have to be? We've had to struggle through that this year, haven't we? Can't always worship in our building. 
Sometimes we have to do it in front of a computer or a TV screen or something like that. How much can we remove? Is worship about a place? Is it about a posture? Is it about a position? Or is it about our attitude? It's a time for us to come before God and recognize how great and awesome He is and attribute worth to Him at that time. And that doesn't have to happen in a church building. It doesn't have to happen in a particular place. That can happen anywhere. It doesn't matter where we're doing it. And then the third example is she demonstrates humility. She demonstrates humility. When I was in college, we had what we called J-term, and it was classes that we would take during the month of January. It's kind of an intensive class. In the first year, my, my roommate decided he was going to take a class on, I can't remember, manners, I think is what it was. And as one of the climax events, they went to the Summit Club in Fort Wayne, which is at the top of the Summit Building, and had dinner there. Real swanky place. Is it still there, Katie? I don't know. You don't know? No, no. So uh, he needed somebody to drive him, and I was his roommate, so he said, why don't you come along with me? So I got my suit on, we went to the top of the Summit Club, and we had dinner, and that was fancy. They pulled out the, ta the chairs for you, they put the napkin in your lap, there was more silverware there than what there was hardware in a hardware store. <laughs> that was, was a big fancy thing. And uh, you know, I was terrified I was going to embarrass somebody by doing the wrong thing as I was sitting there. And so I kept asking my friend Chris, what am I supposed to do now? What's this? What's the appropriate response here? How am I supposed to deal with this? And I was asking him these things. And the, the, the guy sitting across the table from me was not at all concerned. He went and he ordered a uh, um, duck, something duck. And it came up like half the duck, and he picks it up with his hands and he eats it. Oh, I was thinking, I'm pretty sure that's not how you were supposed to do that here. But that's what he did. And if you knew the guy, but you know, um, we didn't expect to see anybody begging there. You didn't see anybody crawling around on the floor or anything. And uh, in my humility, I was just very careful. I didn't want to embarrass anything, anybody. I wanted to be very careful with what I did. And in this passage that we look at, when this woman once again asks for help, she says, Lord, help me. Jesus answered and said, it is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought too. Yeah, Dennis was... said, that's an insult. Was... He told this woman she was a dog. Or at least, like, she was like a dog. <laughs> she was kind of a, I mean, and this is the Messiah. This is Jesus that she's worshiping, that she's so excited about. And he says, basically, you're like a little dog, woman. And so she continues on with a request. But then in her response, she says, yes, Lord, yet even the little dog eats the crumbs which fall from the master's table. As I look at that passage and I, as I read what she says, I think she is saying to Jesus, Jesus, you know that what I'm asking you is just a teeny tiny little thing from you. Not much at all. And so just brush it off the side of the table. Let me have it. It's not a big deal. And Jesus looks at her and he says, Woman, Great is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. Amen. You know, maybe Jesus was just testing this woman through this whole process. As we look at some of the things that he says, he's ignoring her, her saying that she's like a dog, some of those things saying, I was not sent to you, I was sent to the lost sheep of Israel. Maybe it was all just a test. I'm not sure. But it really seems strange that he took so, uh, so long. And so as we, as we go to God and we present our needs to God, how persistent are we? How humble are we? One of my pet peeves 
Maybe I shouldn't go down this path. One of my pet peeves, <laughs> Katie's sitting here thinking he's going to do it anyway. He's going to do it. <laughs> but you know, one of my pet peeves is how, how reckless people will talk to God sometimes. Hey, God, what's up? How's it going? Man, that, it just seems like it's lacking respect. And I know that we have permission and it's okay to go to God, however, but there's also a sense of reverence. There needs to be connected a sense of reverence and there needs to be connected a, a sense of, of humility. And, you know, somewhere in the, in the middle, there needs to be a middle ground recognizing that, that Jesus is the Son of God, that He is the one that can take care of us. And, uh, you know, we can go to God, we can long for mercy from Him, we can act in worship, we can demonstrate humility. These are all things that we see this lady doing. She does all of these things, and as a result, we eventually see uh, Jesus uh, giving, giving her what she wants. This woman was desperate. She, we don't know what her backstory is. She may have had several, several issues where she was trying to get help for her daughter, and she was continually turned away. But uh, eventually, she was driven. She recognized that, that Jesus was the only way that she was going to get the help that she needed for her daughter. And so she continues to persist. And she doesn't lose hope. We need to go to God with the issues that we have. I think a lot of times we think, well, Whatever I'm dealing with right now is just too small or too petty uh, for God to deal with. We don't have an issue that's too small for God to deal with. We don't have an issue that's so big that God can't take care of it. And everything in between, He's interested in. But sometimes the way that we're going to get there is through our persistence through our worship, through our listening. We need to be willing to, to be like this woman. And maybe we'll hear Jesus say to us, you have great faith. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for your presence here with us today. Thank you for the opportunity that you've given us to worship you. We would ask, Lord, that... Uh, for the people that are facing situations right now, I pray, Lord, that you would enlarge our faith. I pray that you would help us to be like this woman. Lord, maybe our eyes are focused on the wrong thing. Maybe we need to focus on you, Lord, as Savior and as Messiah. Maybe we need to demonstrate a little more humility. Maybe we need to just come to you and long for mercy and cry out. Lord, I pray that whatever it is that we're faced with, whatever challenges we're dealing with, that we would be able to turn them over to you and that we would be able to see you take care of them. Guide us now, Lord, in our faith journey, and we pray, Lord, for your blessing upon each person here. We ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We do have a closing now.
opportunity to worship you. We just ask for, for your guidance and for your direction in our lives throughout this week. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen.